He wanted to express his love for his son. And as he neared his home, his heart quickened. The upstairs light was on, indicating the son had come home. And soon the father and son embraced, became reconciled, and established a new relationship founded on God's forgiving love. A young Christian college football player who had been raised in a community where blacks are resented had always found it impossible to love blacks. And one evening he heard me talk to a group of racially mixed students about loving by faith, especially in reference to loving those of other races. As you prayed, he told me later, I claimed God's love for the black man. Then as I left the amphitheater, the first person I saw was a black man, and he was talking to a white girl. Now, he said, that's about as explosive a situation as you can imagine for a man who hates blacks as I have. But suddenly, I felt a compassion for that black man. At one time, I would have hated him and probably would have been rude and angry with him. But God heard my prayer. That same evening, a young black couple approached me in the lobby of the Arrowhead Springs Hotel. They were radiant, joyful. Something wonderful happened to me tonight, the young woman said. I was liberated from my hatred for the white man. I've hated the white man since I was a little girl. I've known that as a Christian I should love the white man, but I couldn't help myself. I hated the whites, and I wanted to get revenge. But tonight, she said, I've begun to love the whites by faith. And you know, it really works. The young man added, I work. It worked for me, too. Now my hatred for the whites is gone. Thank you for telling us how to love by faith. Whites who had hated blacks and blacks who had hated whites have discovered God's supernatural love for each other. Christian husbands and wives were living in conflict and claimed God's love by faith, and miracles have resulted. Parents, children, all kinds of conflicts in the family have been resolved. Generation gaps have been bridged through loving by faith. Conflicts in working situations have been resolved. Enemies cease to be enemies when we love them by faith. God's love has a way of dissolving prejudice and breaking down barriers. Love is the greatest power known to man. Love never fails. Nothing can overcome God's love. In the first century, there was a happy wedding of love and faith, resulting in a great worldwide spiritual revolution. Then both were love, lost during the Dark Ages. The realization of Martin Luther and his colleagues that the just shall live by faith resulted in the Reformation and a mighty movement of God's Spirit around the world. But there was little love. In fact, there was often great conflict. Today, God is bringing back to our remembrance the biblical wedding of the two, faith and love. Through faith, that supernatural divine love of God will reach out where nothing else can go to capture men and women for Christ. The love which results from that faith will captivate people everywhere so that as we live and love by faith, we shall spread God's love throughout the world. This love is so contagious so attractive and aggressive, it creates hunger for God. It is active, constantly looking for loving things to do, people to uplift and lives to change. Begin to love by faith. Make a list of people whom you do not like and begin to love them by faith. Maybe you'll place yourself on that list. Have you thought of applying the truths of 1 Corinthians 13 to yourself by faith? Ask God to enable you to see yourself as he sees you. You have no reason to dislike yourself when your creator has already forgiven you and has demonstrated his unconditional love by dying for you. If Christ is in you, you're complete because Christ himself is perfect love, perfect peace, perfect patience, perfect kindness. He is all goodness and he is living in you. Whatever Satan tries to uh, tell you, whenever he tries to attack you by reminding you of your sins which you have already confessed or by magnifying your weaknesses and shortcomings, claim in faith the forgiveness and righteousness of God 
and thank Him on the authority of God's Word that you do not have to be intimidated by Satan's accusations. Thank Him that you are a child of God and that your sins are forgiven. Thank God that Satan has no control over you except that which is allowed by God. Then cast this care on the Lord as we're commanded to do in 1 Peter 5, 7. Perhaps your boss, a fellow employee, your children, your father and mother is on that list of those whom you will love by faith. Pray for each person on the list. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with Christ's love for all of these. The next time you meet, draw upon God's limitless, inexhaustible, overwhelming love for them by faith. Watch God work His miracle through you. Watch Him use your smile, your words, your patience, your wisdom and compassion to express His love for each individual. Love by faith every one of your enemies, every one who angers you, ignores you, bores you, or frustrates you. People are waiting to be loved with God's love. A housewife who through a long, cold winter had seen her family through mumps and measles, a broken nose, three new teeth for the baby, and countless other difficulties reached the point where these pressures and demands became too much for her. And finally on her knees, she began to protest, Oh, Lord, I have so much to do. But imagine her surprise when she heard herself saying, Oh, Lord, I have so much to love. We will never run out of opportunities to love by faith. Remember, the agape kind of love is an act of the will, not just an emotion. You love by faith. By faith, you can claim God's love step by step, person by person. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Like fruit, love grows. Producing fruit requires a seed, then a flower, then pollination, then warm sun and refreshing rains and even some contrary winds. Similarly, in daily life, your love will be warmed by joy, watered by tears, spread by the winds of circumstances. God uses all of your experience to work His will in your life. He is the one who makes your love grow. It is a continual, ever-increasing thing. As Paul says, May the Lord make your love grow and overflow to each other and to everyone else. Now, how does loving by faith motivate you to engage in aggressive evangelism? And how does loving by faith contribute to the fulfillment of the Great Commission? The answer is obvious. When you begin to truly love God by faith with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbors yourself, and to love your enemies, you'll begin to see people as God sees them, as individuals of great worth, as those for whom Christ died. As a result, you'll be motivated by the same love which constrained the Apostle Paul who said, everywhere we go, we talk about Christ to all who will listen. Love, God's kind of love, causes the Great Commission to become a personal responsibility and privilege. When non-Christians observe Christians not only saying that they love one another, but also proving it by their actions, they, like their first century counterparts, will marvel at how they love one another and will be drawn to receive and worship our Savior with us. How exciting it is to have such a dynamic, joyful force available to us as believers. And it all comes from our loving Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the incarnation of love himself. And you can claim his love by faith. Right now, on the basis of God's command to love and God's promise to answer whenever we pray for anything in accordance with his will, why not make this prayer your own? Will you bow and pray with me right now? Lord Jesus, you are the incarnation of love. And you live within us. And your word commands us to love God, to love our neighbors, ourselves, to love our enemies. 
this we're incapable of doing unless you enable us by your Spirit to love. And having commanded us to love and promised that if we ask anything according to your will, you will hear and answer us, I claim your supernatural love for everyone and pray that I might be a center of spiritual revolution, a revolution of love. And I pray this in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. If this video has been a help to you, and if you would like to have other videos in this challenging transferable concept series, call toll-free 1-800-352-TAPE or write to Campus Crusade for Christ, Arrowhead Springs, 7090, San Bernardino, California, 92414.